Hi everyone. Thank you for joining us this afternoon or evening, depending on where you are. My name is Sabir, pronouns he, him, and I direct events here at the Strand. Before we launch into a discussion of Samira Negrush's newest collection, The Olive Trees, Jazz, and Other Poems, I'd like to share a little bit of history about the Strand. The Strand was founded in 1927 by Benjamin Bass over on 4th Avenue's Book Row. Stretching from Union Square to Astor Place, Book Row gradually dwindled from 48 bookstores until, after over 94 years, the Strand is a sole survivor, now run by third generation owner Nancy Bass Whiten. We want to thank all of you for your support. Without our loyal community of book lovers, authors like Marilyn, Samira, and Philip, we wouldn't be here today, and we are so appreciative of it. And apologies for the ambulances in the background. I am in New York City. Oh. Okay. Tonight we are thrilled to have with us Samira Nabrush and translator Marilyn Hacker for the launch of Samira's newest book, The Olive Trees, Jazz, and Other Poems. Born in Algiers, where she still lives, Tamira is a poet and translator, as well as a doctor who is privileged. I'm sorry, I'm trying to find the source of that. I think you need to mute uh, Marilyn. Uh, sorry? Can, can you mute? Thank you. Perfect. So, um, Born in Algiers, where she still lives, Samira Negrush is a poet and translator as well as a doctor who has privileged her literary craft over the practice of medicine. Prone to multidisciplinary projects, she has frequently collaborated with visual artists, choreographers, and musicians. She's the author of several books and artist books, mainly published in Algeria and France. Her poetry has been translated into over 20 languages, including Spanish, Italian, and Bulgarian. Among her books, most recently, include Traces and the Olive Trees, Jazz, and Other Poems, translated by Marilyn Hacker and published by Pleiades Press, and is her first full-length collection to appear in English. Marilyn Hacker is the author of 14 books of poems, including Blazons, A Stranger's Mirror, a collaborative book, Diaspo Renga, written with Dima K. Shababi, and an essay collection, Unauthorized Voices. Her 18 translations of French and Francophone poets also include Claire Malroux's Daybreak, Jean Paul de Daedelson's That Light All at Once, and Venus Curie Gada's Where Are the Trees Going? She received the 2010 Ken Volker Award and the International Organa Prize for Poetry in 2011. She lives in Paris. Joining Sabira and Marilyn in conversation is Philip Metris. Philip has written numerous books, including Shrapnel Map, Sand Opera, and The Sound of Listening. Awarded fellowships from the Guggenheim and Landon Foundations and three Arab American Book Awards, he's a professor of English and director of the Peace, Justice, and Human Rights Program at John Carroll University. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Philip, Marilyn, and Samira to the stage. So the way we decided to run this event is that Samira and Marilyn will be reading uh, their poems um, in alternating between French and, and the translation in English. So whenever you're ready, go for it. First of all, thank you, Sabir, for uh, this invitation and for, for this opportunity to, uh, to uh, launch this, this book finally. We will start with a few fragments from Café Sans Sucre, Coffee No Sugar, and then we will read the section uh, called Moins Un, Minus One. We will start with French, and then Marilyn will, be, will read the, the English version. Une, deux. Je compte les gouttes qui tombent du ciel sur le bout de plastique insolent qui traîne sur le balcon. Trois. Quatre. Toutes les pensées sont bonnes à chasser. Quand rien ne vient, ni désir, ni sommeil, 
Je cherche une cigarette du coin de l'œil et je ne fume même pas. One, two, I count the drops falling from the sky on the rag of plastic lying insolently on the balcony. Three, four, every thought only worth driving away when nothing comes, not desire or sleep out of the corner of my eye. I search for a cigarette and I don't even smoke. Encore cette main qui tremble et presse à peine le stylo vulgaire sur une grille de mots croisés. Le piano reste fermé et poussiéreux. Le poète est une ombre craintive sur un fauteuil déchu face au lampadaire éteint d'une mosquée endormie et rêve au jour qui se lèvera sans lui. That hand trembling again as it tentatively presses the banal ballpoint on a crossword puzzle grid. The piano stays closed and dusty. The poet, a timid shadow on a dilapidated armchair facing the extinguished lamp of a sleeping mosque, dreams of day that will break without her. Je dis, pour écrire les choses les plus banales, il faut d'abord écrire sa naissance de la mère, du père, de l'amour, du corps, des femmes, des hommes, du violeur et des assassins, de l'inceste et du doute, de la nuit et de la faim, du désert, des livres, de la jalousie, du soupçon, du sexe, des ruines, de la mer, des arbres, de l'archéologie, des dieux grecs et païens et des étoiles. Je dis, tout cela est presque banal, avant et après, écrire. I said... To write the most ordinary things, you must first write your birth, about your mother, your father, about the body, women, men, the rapist, the assassins, incest, about night, about doubt, the desert, hunger, books, jealousy, suspicion, sex, ruins, the sea, trees, archaeology, Greek and pagan gods, and about the stars. I said, all that is almost ordinary before and after writing. L'écoulement de ta dérive. Dès à présent, tu glisses sur le chemin. J'aimerais dans une langue lointaine te dire ce que je ne comprends pas. Ah. 121. 121. Quelle page Page 121. Ah. Excuse-moi, c'était toi où tu as commencé en français? It's page 121 for you. The poem is called. Oh, no, 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 bien entendu. Um, the outline of your drifting, up until now, you've slid along the road. I would like, in a faraway language, to tell you what I don't understand. Plus rien ne te rattrape du doute, de l'obsession des semences. Ton corps est amnésie plurielle, futile, limpide, disparition, tient lieu d'espace, tient lieu de vide, acerclé. Nothing pulls you back from doubt any longer, from obsession, from seeding. Your body is amnesia plural, futile, limpid. Its disappearance stands in for space, stands in for an emptiness to circle round. Non visible. Le sens se sommeille, vacille sur la faille. Tu n'attends rien des heures, pas le retour des jours, pas le jour. Tu attends. Not visible. The sense slumbers, teeters on the edge. You expect nothing of the hours, not the day's return, not daybreak. You expect. Il n'y avait pas eu de jour sans sable, et tu croyais le soleil intarissable. Tu n'avais pas vu la lanterne est froide. There had been no days without sand, and you thought the sun 
inexhaustible. You had not seen. The lantern is cold. Partir, c'est escalader son désarroi sur la corde de l'oubli. Partir, c'est encore la vie derrière soi. Leaving, you clamber up your confusion on the cord of forgetting. Leaving is all of life still behind you. Ce qui reste, commencer chaque matin à heure précise, comme reprendre à zéro, répondre à l'oubli du temps, à la dérive des âges, à ta mère qui tremble, à la généalogie du pire, au désastre des dieux, finir de compter les heures qui restent. What remains to begin each morning at the same hour, like starting from zero, to answer times, memory, loss, and the drift of ages, your mother trembling, the genealogy of the worst, the disaster of the gods, to finish counting the remaining hours. Tu ne te résignes pas. Sorry, sorry. It, non, 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 c'était toi. Tu ne te résignes pas à relâcher le bord du ciel. À 9 heures ce matin, tu tiens le souffle du voilier, aller vers le chemin le plus étroit, redessiner le mirage. You can't bring yourself to let go of the sky's edge. At 9 o'clock this morning, you hold the sailboat's breath. Head for the narrowest path to redraw the mirage. Tu te demandes ce qu'est un lieu à soi, si tu dois te délaver, t'alléger de tes promesses. Hier, tu voulais savoir si, et voilà que tu ne sais plus pourquoi. Il eût fallu s'y jeter, sans prévision. You ask yourself, what is a place of your own, if you must fade yourself out, unweight yourself of promises. Yesterday you wanted to know if, and now you no longer, and now you no longer know why. You should have dived in with no expectations. Thank you, Marilyn. Thank you, Samira. <laughs> Merci, Samira. Shukran Lik. I, would you like to read a little bit more, or is that what you were planning to read for this? Uh, I, I, it's up to Samira. I, I would be, I, I'd be delighted to, <laughs> to read more. <laughs> Please, no. Samira, why don't you choose something? Um, uh, uh, what, uh, yes, Samira, qu'est-ce que tu diras de au moins deux strophes des sept petits monologues de Jasmine? Okay, which city do you do you want to read? No, um, Maybe I, I know that you have many. Medina. Let's say Damas, Le Caire okay. et Alger. Uh, Damas, Rabat et Alger. Okay, très bien. Voilà, so we will read the three cities. Dam Damascus, okay. Rabat, and Algiers, the capital. Saint homme des vallées fertiles, des colonnes sculptées, du lutte ouvragé. Ils habitent ta demeure et se réclament de tes sagesses. Ils feignent le patrimoine et n'en goûtent que les épices colorées. Ils embrassent ton mausolée, lisent tes vers et consentent à l'offrande. Ils ont le port droit et parlent de dignité. Ils parlent en fraternité et se réclament des dieux. Saint homme ont tes terres, les âmes ont quitté l'ombre du mur et jailli comme un. On a arrêté leurs ombres croissantes et elles sont restées un. On a brisé leurs cils et étouffé leurs regards, elles sont restées un. 
l'un qui persiste et avance et parle enfin et divulgue l'imposture. Sur tes terres et sur la terre de l'un saint homme, les frères sont venus des quatre lieux de l'ancien royaume, du Maghreb, du Mashreq et du Hijaz. Ils sont venus les frères qui embrassent tes sagesses et sur le seuil de ta porte ils ont fermé les fenêtres de leurs cils et dans l'antre de l'un, ils ont voilé leur sens et parlé au nom du Fils. Saint homme des vallées fertiles, dans le cœur de ta sagesse, un vélo avance et les hauteurs ne sont plus que des terrains de tir. Damascus, holy man of fertile valleys, of sculpted columns, of the lutes marquetry, they live in your dwelling place and claim to have your wisdom. They pretend to your inheritance, but taste only its colored spices. They kiss your tomb, read your verses, and agree on the offering. They stand tall and speak of dignity. They speak fraternity, fraternally and claim to be gods. Holy man, in your land, souls left the wall's shadow and surged up as one. Their burgeoning shadows were arrested and they remained one. Their eyelashes were broken, their gaze smothered and they remained one. The one who persists and comes forward and finally speaks and reveals the deception. On your lands and on the land of the one holy man, the brothers have come from the four corners of the ancient kingdom of the Maghreb, the Mashrek, the Hijaz. They have come, the brothers who embrace your wisdom, and on the threshold of your doorway, they close the windows of their eyelashes, and at the hearth of the one, they veiled their senses and spoke in the name of the sun. Holy man of the fertile valleys, a bicycle rolls across the heart of your wisdom, and now the heights are merely firing ranges. Rabba. De mes cousins du Toubral, j'ai la langue précise et claquante. Une peau à toute épreuve et le regard de Fanina aigle insaisissable. Dans ma montagne retranchée me parvient le chant de la source rouge, l'écho de l'Atlantique des îles en bordure et les sabots vaincus fuyant les amandiers. De mes cousins du Toubral, j'ai le silence attentif sur les places du folklore, les cracheurs de feu, les mariages scénarisés, les culs loués et les harira à deux dirhams. Chez mes cousins du Toubral, le luxe des miséreux achève l'Andalousie et le misérable fait sa pose jambe tendue vers le cireur de chaussures. Et lorsque comble de bons sentiments, monarque à la petite semaine d'une fête de façade, une mère de passage sirotant l'orange pressée, à bientôt minuit, une mère trouve beau le sourire de l'enfant courageux, le sourire de la petite fille qui sur la place à bientôt minuit, vend des mouchoirs en papier à la mère dont les enfants dorment déjà, rêvent déjà. Quand la mère aime ce sourire, Grenade est à jamais perdue. Rabat, I have by Tukbal cousin's precise and deadly way of talking, impenetrable skin and the gaze of Tamina, elusive eagle. On my unattainable mountain, the song of the red wellspring comes to me, the echo of the Atlantic, the coastal islands and defeated hooves fleeting the almond trees. I have my Tukbal cousin's attentive silence about the folklore squares, the fire eaters, the choreographed marriages, the rented arses and the two dirham khoras, khiras. At my Tukbal cousin's home, the luxury of the destitute puts an end to Andalusia, and the pauper poses his leg extended toward the boot black. And when at the height of virtuous feelings, small time monarchs of a cobbled together celebration, 
a mother on holiday sipping orange juice at nearly midnight, a mother finds the smile of the plucky child beautiful, the smile of a little girl who on the square at nearly midnight is selling a packet of tissues to the mother whose children are already asleep, already dreaming, when the mother admires that smile, Granada is lost forever. Alger. En cette journée lézardée de déception, où le bleu a quitté la mer pour envahir la colline, chaîne blindée dans la main minuscule. Minuit avorte le jour, laissant la case bas à ses débris. J'en appelle à la mémoire d'Alger, de ses comptoirs marins au char de l'occupation. J'en appelle à Hassiba, à Jamila, à Didouche et à Boudiev, aux ancêtres et aux amnésiques, aux violeurs de rêves et aux traîtres de toujours. J'en appelle à chaque goutte versée, à chaque humiliation, que jaillisse enfin la baie et qu'elle nous habite, qu'elle ouvre nos paupières assommées, que se réveillent al anqa et les diwanes assiégées, que s'ouvrent les seuils de nos maisons, et que s'élève le chant nouveau, que se lève le TGV express, qu'il ramène la brise de Tanger et qu'il amorce sa course de Tunis à Alexandrie et de Beyrouth à Istanbul, que s'ouvre un jour nouveau et que minuit embaume de jasmin. <rire> On this morning, cracked with disappointments when blue has left the sea to invade the hill in a uniform chain tightening on the diminishing crowds. Midnight aborts the day, leaving the Kasbah to its rubbish and fragments. I appeal to the memory of Algiers from its seaside bars to the tanks of the occupation. I appeal to Hasiba, to Jamila, to Didouche and to Boudiaf to the ancestors and to the amnesiacs, to the rapists of dreams and to the perpetual traitors. I appeal to every drop spilled, to every humiliation. Let the bay gush forth at last and let it inhabit us. Let it open our senseless eyelids. Let Al Anka and the, bes and the besieged Duwans awaken. Let the doorways of our houses open and let a new song arise. Let the TGV Express awaken, let it bring back the breeze from Tanger, and let it start a new route from Tunis to Alexandria and from Beirut to Istanbul. Let a new day open and let midnight be fragrant with jasmine. Tu veux qu'on ajoute deux poèmes de six arbres de fortune? Um, pourquoi pas? <laughs> Maintenant ou tout à l'heure? Peut-être tout à l'heure. OK. Here we are, Philippe. That was absolutely lovely. Thank, thank you so much for sharing that reading. Hope everybody does get a copy of their amazing book. We're going to be talking about just a minute. They asked me, me to read just a, a, a poem of my own from uh, my most recent book, and then we can segue into the questions. So please do put your questions um, in the chat or the Q&A function so we know what sort of things you'd like us to talk about. Um, this book, Shrapnel Maps, which also came out during the pandemic and uh, um, one of the many things that have sort of uh, washed away in a sense um, still remains by my side. I, I wanted to read just a, a very short uh, couple poems um, that are from the section called A Concordance of Leaves that concerned um, and celebrated the wedding of my sister to a man from Palestine and Tura, a small village um, in the Janin district. Um, and it was that trip really that, that sort of started or planted the seeds for me to be thinking a little bit more broadly about um, the, the predicament of Palestinians and the predicament of Palestine and, and Israel. So this is from a concordance of leaves from Shrapnel Maps. For throwing a Molotov at a bus, Muhammad spent a month, his head buried in burlap. Now 
This new brother cradles his skull, his bulk, tiptoes the new house, no doors on the frames, nowhere and nothing to hide. He sweeps all the noise with insistent silence in hands tied in knots of not knowing what to do with suddenness. Now his wife Amal and her black eyes gleam in the dark room. To her breast, she quiets Carmel, which means God's vineyard. Water. Scarved sisters are radiant with wide mouths and waves and teeth and singing. And though there is the great unhappiness framed in silent, unsmiling faces, hammered on insides of houses, watching over all preparations, night is lifting, the women are drumming the tabla, their voices inviting a heart to break itself and open a space another could nest inside. Because there is a word for love in this tongue that entwines two people as one. And there is a word for love in this tongue that nests in the chambers of the heart. And a word for love in this tongue that wanders the earth, for love in this tongue in which you lose yourself in this tongue. And a word that carries sorrow within its bowels. And a word for love that exudes from your pores. And a word for love that shares its name with falling. I thought of choosing an ending on that moment. Yes, Marilyn. Uh, I think uh, Sabir had suggested that I read a short poem as well. If that, oh, uh, awesome. That's great. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and uh, uh, this is called Pantum, and it's dedicated to uh, Fadwa Suleiman, uh, the uh, Syrian poet and act actor and political activist who died in Paris in uh, 2017. Said the old woman who barely spoke the language, freedom is a dream and we don't know whose. Said the insurgent who was now in exile. When I began to write the story, I started bleeding. Freedom is a dream and we don't know whose. That man I last saw speaking in front of the clock tower when I began to write the story, I started bleeding five years after I knew I'd have no more children. That man I last saw speaking in front of the clock tower turned an anonymous corner and disappeared. Five years after I knew I'd have no more children, my oldest son was called up for the army, turned an anonymous corner and disappeared. My nephew, my best friend, my second sister, whose oldest son was called up for the army, are looking for work now in other countries. Her nephew, his best friend, his younger sister, a doctor, an actress, an engineer, are looking for work now in other countries stumbling, disillusioned in a new language. A doctor, an actress, an engineer, wrestle with the rudiments of grammar, disillusioned, stumbling in a new language, hating their luck and knowing they are lucky. Wrestling with the rudiments of grammar, the old woman who barely speaks the language hated her luck. I know that I am lucky, said the insurgent who is now in exile. Thank you. Powerful, thank you so much. Um, well, I would love to talk a little bit about language and the intersection between language and literature. Um, so I suppose I'm gonna have a, a question for, for each of you. Um, one of the things that I find, found uh, deeply powerful about your poems, Samira, and then in, uh, in the translation as well, so you'll each kind of be able to talk about this from your own angle, is the, the relationship between the writing 
uh, to the language itself. There's this quotation in the translation from minus one, I would like in a faraway language to tell you what I don't understand. Seems to highlight some element of the kind of um, the approach that incorporates or that carries with it a sense of estrangement as well as the longing for connection. And I'm wondering if Samira might talk a little bit about the, the um, your relationship to French and French poetry um, as, as perhaps that faraway language or perhaps poetry is the faraway language, I'm not sure. So I'd be curious for you to just reflect on that as an Algerian uh, writing in French and the empire's language, so to speak. And then, uh, and then I would love for Marilyn to, to talk about your experience in translation, uh, having translated many uh, Francophone poets from a lot of different places um, and, and, and sort of what you found so distinctive and so powerful about Samira's uh, work. Uh, about this, the, that verse, I mean, it, it, it's both. It's the, the specific Algerian linguistic situation, but it's also about, um, let's say, most mystical things and most poetic thing. Uh, but maybe the linguistic Algerian situation would highlight it uh, more. Um, in, in, daily, in daily life, we are surrounded by at least three languages and languages we speak every day. Um, it's, it's quite different from countries like in the Middle East, if I have to take Lebanon as an example, where uh, it's a small country, but also very multicultural, where people also speak Arabic, English, and French. Um, in Algeria, it, it isn't related to a uh, religion. It isn't related to your background. It isn't related to uh, the, the wealth of your family. It's simply that we have a very old language, which is, we, we, we could say our native language. Uh, it is called Tamazight. And this Tamazight is a millennial language. It's, it's here from very, very long time ago. I, I can't exactly tell you uh, when, but I am uh, from a family that still speaks this language. We are originally from the mountains. I was born here in Algiers, but uh, being born in a big city uh, to keep our language uh, vivid, we have to be the ones who uh, take, take care of it. So we speak only this language at home. That's why I didn't uh, lose this language. But then when we get educated, since the 70s, we, uh, we are uh, educated in Arabic until the, ba the baccalaureate. I, we, you don't have this in, uh, in the US system. Uh, baccalaureate is just before you go to university. And then when you go to, to university, you study in French, you study scientific fields. You study in Arabic if you study law or social sciences or history. So we have a double-headed country of two languages like in Belgium, but the official language is Arabic and the non-official language, but the, the practical and the daily working language is French. You will find it in, uh, in, of in offices, in uh, public administration, but also in, uh, in, in shops. People will speak this language in the street or a mix of this language and local Arabic, which isn't close to the classical Arabic. When I, when I have friends visiting from uh, Middle East, most of the time they don't understand people in the street. And people in the street have difficulties to speak classical Arabic if they didn't study in university with this um, classical uh, language. So the situation is what it is. And then there is the ideology, the political ideology around it. Uh, but before, without going to, to, this, uh, to this side, I would say that uh, we always translate ourselves. And I have the feeling that we are always in between something because we have languages for everything. I have uh, the French for the, the let's say, the, the thinking. Um, 
the, the scientific uh, field, the technical field. And then I have the, the, my ancestors language, which is a language that uh, sounds differently. That there, are, that there are words I can't say in my language. Like for example, I, I, I lost specific words of plants. Um, I remember some of them, but not all of them. Like I, I realized that I had uh, a grand grand grandmother who used to be a phytotherapeut. A phytotherapeut is the person who uh, 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 knows the, the, the medical, um, is it the same word in English? Phytotherapy, yes. They got the, the, the medical properties of plants, yes. <laughs> well, the medical properties of plants. Um, uh, we have this, uh, this uh, Algerian poet from a uh, Christian, uh, Christian family, uh, Jean Amrouche, who, uh, who said that he, 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 he thinks and writes, writes in French, but he dreams and... Uh, uh, and cries in, uh, in Berber, in, uh, in Tamazight. Uh, this is maybe caricatural, but it says that there are different layers, uh, which doesn't mean that the inside isn't also Arabic and French. It is all, all of this and many other things because we are also in uh, an African land. Uh, this country is huge. Like if you go to uh, the south of the country, not that far, uh, you would find poetry written in Arabic with a mix of Berber, with a mix of uh, African languages from Niger or, uh, or Mali, specifically in uh, music, uh, poetry music uh, of uh, Gnawa music. Uh, yes, but there is also the other sense of uh, a language that we don't understand. It's all about what we finally can say, uh, and there are so many things we can't we can't say and we can't understand and we, we can't translate. That, that's what that's why we keep uh, write, writing poetry. I think. Of course. Uh, and, so and, uh, is and there something Jean, about? Jean Am what? No, please go ahead, Marilyn. No, I was going to say, and, and Jean Amrouche's mother wrote her wrote wrote the wrote wrote the, wrote, the, wrote the story of her life in Tamazie, didn't she? No, she did in French. Uh, what they did uh, in Tamazight is that they, they collected very old uh, tales uh, who has been written then by, um, by Jean and his sister Taus, who was also a singer and a novelist. But uh, the mother wrote the first novel in the Algerian uh, modern uh, history written by a woman in French. I mean, the first one known, maybe there are others we don't know about, but this one we know. She wrote it uh, in the, 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 the early 40s, but she asked her children to publish it only when she dies. So they did when she died. Ça s'appelle Histoire de ma vie. When you go to my village, for example, you, the, the, the old uh, women, even those who are not uh, uh, able to read, would, uh, would ask you if you, you, you read that book. And you have to take care of men uh, and w watch out for the men because they could uh, do uh, bad things to you, like in the book of uh, uh, of uh, Padmait Mansour, and leave you with uh, with a child. <laughs> it's a wonderful book. <laughs> yeah, it's a wonderful bo book of that uh, that time. Yeah. So, so Marilyn, Zoe Scolding uh, asks a question, which I can just uh, uh, append to the question that I had asked about what you found distinctive about Sumedo's work. The question that she asked is uh, to know more about the voice and sound you find in Sumedo's poems in English. And were there uh, certain connections that you were thinking of about uh, from other poems in English or in translation? Um, and I uh, no, I cert I wasn't think wasn't thinking about any other poems. I really was trying to hear hear some hear Samira's voice and uh, and what Samira does with language and um, bring it somehow into English um, uh, in a way that uh, did 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 does something does something similar to English 
and um, uh, you had you 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 had asked before about translating francophone writers, and it's true that I I think that uh, well I. I, 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 I think that there is a, a different kind of relationship to poetry of, of among uh, Francophone poets, that is to say uh, uh, peop uh, uh, people from Algeria or Tunisia or, 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 or Morocco or even Lebanon who choose to write in French or be I'm choose to write in French because French is one of their uh, one of the one of their primary languages uh, and the relationship to poetry of most uh, and franco french writers which has something to do with the place of poetry in their um, respective i won't say cultures but uh, but in their countries uh, uh, because the place of poetry in france itself has changed drastically and not necessarily for the better uh, over uh, the oh i would say even you know even since world war ii and in fact i would say the same the, I, I would, in, in a sense, put francophone Canadian poets along with the francophone Algerian poets and the, and the uh, francophone Moroccan poets uh, as having a relationship to a poetry that um, is, uh, well, permitted to be committed, uh, that, um, it, uh, that uh, poetry is part of, uh, is part of the literature the, that addresses whatever whatever issues the poet feels to be important, but also you know, whatever, what, what, whatever issues in the zeitgeist uh, imp impose themselves upon a poet at a certain moment. Poetry is not, not expected to be uh, set apart uh, from, um, uh, uh, from life, from politics, from, uh, uh, from history. And, and and good, goodness knows French poetry was not always set apart from history or uh, uh, or, or political issues or daily life, but uh, it has been pushed in that direction. Um, um, and then Louis Aragon would uh, turn in his grave. <laughs> <laughs> so so tell me, Marilyn, what what did you find so um, enchanting and necessary about uh, Samira's work that that wanted you to bring it into English? Mm -hmm. Um, uh, well, I, uh, I, um, I, I like the way it, uh, well, there are many, many things I like about it. I like I, 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 I like the way Samira develops sequences so that, um, you know, it, it, they're, they're not one-off poems. They're, you know, they're, 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 they're poems that uh, take something and build on it and uh, build on it for, and, uh, and build on it further. Uh, I very much, I very much like the element of storytelling that even though they, they are not poems that are specifically narrative about, you know, this is about my grandmother or this is a story I made up about uh, a truck driver driving across, driving across the desert. Uh, 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 nonetheless, you know there is a thread uh, that uh, that um, that connects these sequences, and there is very definitely a sense of something happening, both personal and political, uh, in uh, um, go, uh, developing in uh, in all of these poems. And there's also a very strong sense of place, which I like, mm -hmm. or, play, I, I... Or, or places plural. <laughs> I, I'm going to weave two questions together, and I think I would love to hear from both of you about this. Um, so Rabia or Rabia, I'm not sure how she uh, pronounce, or, uh, pronounces it, but uh, this question yeah, came through. <laughs> this, this, yeah, this question came through. In some ways, your collection reminds me of Simone White's of being dispersed in the number of voices you inherit and use. Um, could you speak to how you weave your history, your country's history, multiple mother tongues? Uh, your different skill sets into a single unifying voice for a collection. And I would just add to that, that in this, that same poem, but minus one, you have this incredible line, which I think is, uh, touches on what Marilyn just said, which is about place. And uh, there's the line, you must ask yourself, what uh, is a place of your own if you must fade yourself in the translation? I think it's an incredibly powerful line that seems to allude to Virginia Woolf, but also this question of, um, what what the tribe or what our place requires of us in terms of effacement in order to appear actually. 
Um, so I'd be, and both of you in some ways are, you know, um, while Samira, you're, you're in the place where you grew up, there's also the sense of diaspora also in the work in Maryland as well. So I'd, I'd be curious to hear what each of you say sort of about your sense about relationship to place and, um, and diaspora, sense of inner emigre feeling. Yeah. So uh, I, I must say that I live in a country of ongoing tragedy. And if you don't uh, take some distance, you can go around this tragedy, infinite tragedy, even if you, if, uh, if you go abroad. I mean, I, I am not exiled. I never thought about leaving the country, but we all live as if we are exiled inside because we don't find our space in this uh, ongoing political uh, and also identity, identity uh, complex identity. Um, uh, of course, there is the colonial history, but then we have these uh, 60 years of independence uh, that have been a huge struggle. We, we live under uh, a kind of, uh, a kind of dictatorship, but which isn't visible as a dictatorship. It is a democracy, but not exactly that. We had we we have been one of the first countries to face uh, radical and political Islamism. Uh, I don't know how you understand it in the U.S., but this is about uh, terrorism and killing the killing the civilians and artists and thinkers and. So every 10 years we have this kind of crisis and we have the feeling that this independence didn't give us uh, enough. Um, and when you go back to the history of Algerian poets, uh, you will see how the tra tragedy goes along their, their lives. One is imprisoned, one is fired from the country, one is tortured, one... I mean, it says a lot about, about the, the local situation. Uh, what I try to do is, in in my in in my work as a as a writer as a poet is I, I every day ask uh, uh, question myself how can I uh, translate this tragedy differently? <laughs> no one is going to hear us because tragedy isn't sexy for anyone, <laughs> and no one can understand it. And I I I, I always question myself. How can I tell even my friends how complex is the situation? Even with language, it's, it's very complex. I know that, uh, to give you an example, with a friend of mine who is a novelist uh, from Paris, we, we, know, we have known each other for uh, 15 years. We even wrote together uh, a text in dialogue. I, I saw her one day in Paris, and then she mentioned a French, uh, an Algerian uh, novelist who is older than me. And she said, you know, Samira, you are a pri privileged person. Your French is so perfect. Uh, he must have lived in, uh, in a poor area because his French isn't that good. So he's very courageous man and he says very courageous things. And I said, <laughs> uh, can you realize that you, you you, you are telling me that all our 15 years are about misunderstandings. Like uh, Algeria isn't about this and French is Algeria isn't about this. And uh, being from an older generation uh, means that he has got more French than I got because uh, they started this uh, teaching in Arabic in the mid uh, 70s. So the, how, 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 can we, how can we translate this, this complexity? How can we find ourselves in between identities, in between histories, in between um, complexities that are also about religion, that are about your identity as a, as a person, as a woman, as uh, you, you have a lot to worry, to worry about. So maybe I, I, I try not to, um, to tell the story 
directly. I, I try to question from uh, echoing with music, for example, with visual arts, with geography, with uh, little photographs. I will pick a, a photograph from Algiers and put it with a photograph uh, from uh, Cairo, another one from uh, Marseille. Um, like it's, it's like trying to create contrast and to put uh, different things in dialogue so that the other person uh, can feel in, in dialogue. I don't know if it's clear what, what I'm trying to, to say, yeah. but um, yeah, this is it. And also I realize that uh, life goes so fast um, uh, that we, we don't have time to go everywhere. But I know for uh, the, the, the time that I had to live in this country that uh, we have to do things differently because the, how we did them all these years uh, didn't work and we, we still are circling around, circling around the tragedy and being always in conflict between one and the other, between uh, inside ourselves. Uh, and I mean, it's a pity because it's a country that is completely uh, rich of, uh, of multiple identities and cultures and layers. And uh, we always have this saying that uh, uh, Algeria could be the new uh, California, if California means something for someone. Uh, but uh, it's, it's, it's this thing how, how history can always put you, put you down. And how, how, can you, how can you create something as an artist, as a writer, as a thinker um, from all the remnants of it without, without always being in, 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 a, in a complaining, uh, in a complain uh, mode. And that is really an issue. Like uh, I, I, used a, I used a word in, a, in an essay I wrote a few months ago. I said that in Algeria, we are in confinement uh, since so many years. And that is true. And I use this word because now people understand. How, how would you feel if you had to live how you live now since, since 40 or 50 or 60 years? And that's, that's maybe the, uh, the situation. We, you, you wouldn't be uh, in mute and in waiting position all your life. You have to do something. And to do something and to find meaning uh, in, the tr in the tragedy, you, you have to create something new. Uh, and, and that's what, uh, what's the, what the challenge is. Thank you, Samira. That, that, uh, that really does help us kind of understand. And, and sadly, that, uh, that COVID has provided a metaphor for understanding what this feeling of confinement and um, a sense of a kind of ongoing political pressure that, that, that you yourself and others feel um, uh, confined by. Um, Marilyn, did you want to say anything about this question I asked sort of about uh, uh, <laughs> Relationship to place. Uh, well, uh, you mean in terms of some in terms of Samira's poems, uh, or, uh, or your I, own? Yeah. Uh, well, I get. Uh, I I I realize. I I realize. I mean, my relationship to place is rather different than uh, Samira's uh, in the fact that I don't. I I don't live in. I don't live in the place where I grew up. Where I grew up and. And I don't live in the country in which I grew up, and the language that is around me uh, most days is not is not the language in which I write, although it's the language from which I oh, one language from which from a language from which from uh, um, from which I translate. And I think that I think in that subject of well, I know that I well even even that short poem that I picked to read, which will uh, was. Uh, in part based on a conversation with uh, uh, with 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 Fadwa Suleiman, but uh, it uh, is, it resonates that there's something some, something something about the question of about the question of exile of displacement um, of uh, changing language of out, 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 out of necessity uh, is something that I do think perme uh, permeates my work and. Um, Perhaps also uh, perme permeates the um, 
choice of uh, the the desire to translate and the and the and the and the choice and the choice of, and the choice of uh, poets to translate, and of course, um, I'm not a well. I'm I'm not a child of immigrants, but I'm a grandchild of immigrants, uh, whose parents uh, grew up speaking another language or other languages before uh, before before they spoke English. Uh, and although I didn't get any of those other languages as uh, part of my uh, uh, part uh, part of, uh, part of my childhood, part of the instruct, part of the instruction, or part of what was considered to be important. I, I, perhaps there is something about uh, uh, coming back to the uh, coming back to the the experience of exile, of emigration, of want of not only having to but wanting to live between languages and um, uh, having and doing that much of the time. Yeah, one so, of the things. Yeah, please go ahead. If I can add something, I'm um, thinking of our discussion. It feels like we have to, all of us have to face something. And uh, as Camus said, uh, each generation has to face uh, its challenges. Uh, and I have the feeling that each generation uh, goes close to what this challenge is that finally we don't understand what is exactly this challenge we we we, we get to approach it we, without understanding what we really need to face and yeah that's it what what do we have to face marilyn and philip <laughs> <laughs> well one of the things that uh, just absolutely delights me about conversations like this is as I um, was reflecting earlier that uh, here we are talking to each other through this technology from three different continents, um, each of us with a different relationship to this language <laughs> that we're speaking. Next year in Beirut, inshallah. <laughs> inshallah, inshallah. Um, and, uh, and, and yet we, sh we also share this, this deep sense that um, in the forms of of language and the music of words that we can find a space to, to sort of reside in and, and, and take pleasure in and, and, um, and, uh, and find sanctuary in. So I, I'm, I'm really grateful for, for this opportunity to spend this time together. I'm, I'm aware that we're sort of at the, the hour point and um, Sabir who was just so generously helped to organize this together said that we could go over a little bit um, perhaps, I, uh, would you like to read to do one last poem together yes. as, as a way of going out? Maybe we can read the last section for uh, to close. Pendant que tu passes. That's what I was going to suggest, actually, because I think it has a beautiful ending that sort of points us. Yeah, that was that was Marilyn's idea to uh, to put it in the end. Yeah, a uh, uh, la page. I will I will start in French. Uh, uh, tu, tu me dire, uh, uh, la page c'est 122. 126, 127. Okay. C'est là. In French pendant que tu passes, in English okay. while you pass by. Okay. Je l'ai. Des vies passent devant toi. Des vies passent devant toi pendant que tu passes. Des arbres, des souffles, un réseau magnétique, des fils hors réseau, des fulgurances et des immondices, des dieux solaires et des obscurs, des habités et des inconscients, des pas encore criminels et des à jamais inoffensifs qui se croient impuissants et qui baissent les yeux devant le monde qui tâche et qui hurle. Des rêves passent devant toi, qui ne savent pas où commence l'illusion, où se termine le ciel, pendant que tu passes. While you pass by, five. Lives pass by before you, while you pass by. Trees, breath, a magnetic network, wires outside the network, intensities and refuse, solar gods and dark ones, the, the inhabited, the unconscious, the not yet criminal, and the eternally inoffensive, who think themselves powerless and lower their eyes before a world that stains 
and howls. Dreams pass before you that don't know where illusion ends, where the sky, where illusion begins, where the sky ends while you pass by. J'ai habité un large sentier sur lequel se penchent les ombres, le flanc souple et docile à l'heure du coucher. J'ai habité une voie romaine qui garde fiévreuse la sueur de danseurs aux inconscients, les torses vêtus du soir. J'ai habité l'instant flexible d'un temps qui ne se fixe pas sur une ville en sursis où la splendeur est la norme. J'ai habité de ne savoir où demain s'arrête. I lived on a wide path, shadows bent over it, their flanks supple and docile as the hour when the sun set. I lived on a Roman road that keeps the sweat of reckless dancers feverish, their torsos clad with nightfall. I lived in the flexible moment of a time that will not settle on a reprieved city where splendor is the norm. I lived by not knowing where tomorrow ends. Je marche dans ton ombre, mais je ne pense pas tout le temps à toi. Je ne marche pas tout le temps sur les pavés de la Renaissance, dans des temples bénis ou des vergers millénaires. Des ciels me trempent la face, mon amour, et ce n'est pas de penser à toi ni à la petite âme qui tend la main vers celle qui ne les fleure pas, en attendant sagement les roues qui voudront bien l'effacer de ce désastre. Il pleut sur moi des pensées errantes qui semblent appartenir à d'autres dont, dont les ombres marchent sur moi. I walk in your shadow, but I don't think about you all the time. I'm not always walking on Renaissance cobblestones in consecrated temples or millennial orchards. Skies drench my face, my love, and it's not from thinking of you, nor the little soul holding out a hand to the one who doesn't brush against it, sensibly waiting for the wheels that would gladly crush it out of this disaster. Errant thoughts rain on me that seem to belong to others whose shadows walk over me. Si tu savais le temps qui me traverse pendant que je traverse vers toi. If you knew the time that goes through me while I go toward you. Tu ne sais pas qui passe. You don't know who's going past. Hmm. Lovely. Thank you so much. Um, and thanks to Strand Bookstore and Sabir for your Thank you. organizing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All. That was just such a lovely, lovely yeah. hour. Um, to our audience, if you haven't grabbed a copy of the Olive Trees Jazz and Other Poems, if you're watching via Zoom, I dropped a link in the chat. If you're watching via Facebook, I dropped a link in the video description. You can also purchase uh, Marilyn's most recent collection, Blazons, uh, through uh, links in the chat and in the Facebook description, as well as Philip's uh, Shrapnel. So once again, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Samira, Marilyn, Philip, for joining us all obliquely in New York City, but technically from everywhere. It's, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Sabir. <laughs> and hope to meet you soon. <laughs> yeah, I hope to meet you in real next time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hopefully we can do it in person. <laughs> yes. Let's do this. That would be lovely. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Let's fly to Algiers. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and, and make it something different than a tragedy. That's right. Yeah. Bye-bye. Oh. Bye. Thank you. Shukran. <laughs>